But basically, the solutions I promote in my book are how to work in harmony with nature, how to work in harmony with natural law, and how to raise the consciousness of the people through educational programs, including meditation, in a way that will empower people to make better decisions, including better health decisions, to enjoy better health, take the burden off the healthcare system, to make law-abiding, life-supporting decisions so they don't commit so many crimes, they don't create problems that the government has to solve. But uh, in this book, there are common sense solutions supported by research in all the different areas from sustainable energy, re agriculture, renewable agriculture and energy and so forth, that work and that simply need to be uh, promoted in government and we will see a better world. That's what this book is about. It also establishes this book, the connection between quantum physics, the unified field, the superstring, and consciousness showing that human awareness maximally expanded in the meditative state is the direct experience of the unified field promoted by Einstein and ultimately realized in today's superstring theories. The unified field and pure, unbounded, universal consciousness are one, one and the same. So why have we lost our way? Because what you say makes so much common sense, but we've lost our way. Why is that? The long passage of time brings inevitably the march of entropy and ignorance. The unified field is an ancient reality, and it's ancient as well as modern knowledge. But science had no idea about the unified field until recently, and it had faded from common knowledge. And if you don't know about the fundamental unity of life, it's not a simple, simple, easy technique to get there and to experience it, it'll be forgotten. And it was. It was forgotten. And without the knowledge of deeper reality, knowledge of unity, the diversity, the entropy, and the chaos basically took over. We will get back there. Once the unified field has been discovered, which it has, it's irreversible. But it has to be taught and promoted, doesn't it? And yes. we don't do that. We hardly do that. We, you're right, we don't. And unfortunately, there's in history a built-in delay of about a generation, even two, between a scientific discovery and its dissemination throughout society through education. So we could wait a generation or two in the unified field and the meditative techniques to experience the unified will eventually inevitably come into being. But I don't have the patience and I'm not young enough to wait around for two generations. So me and you and our colleagues are really working to get this knowledge out and even more important than the intellectual understanding, get the experience out. People shouldn't philosophize about it. They should experience their unbounded universal nature. And that changes everything, because it changes the brain. And the brain is basically responsible for virtually everything we do. Do you find that governments are more receptive than they were? Governments are more receptive than they were because the people, the masses, are awakening and beginning to demand better policies. So s the special interest groups are still there promoting weaponry and so on and so forth. Those negative forces are there, but the people are more awake today. They see the nonsense, and they're starting to demand a better government. No matter how many millions, if not billions of dollars, the lobbyists can spend on behalf of their corporations, it's the people who vote. And ultimately, if you can bypass the political process and raise, reach the people, raise the collective consciousness of the people, they will demand and elect a better government. The trouble is, as we know, and I think it says in your book, that people are basically going to vote for what they think is going to bring them more quality in life. Yeah. And unfortunately, at the moment, people still think it's tangible things, it's material things that are going to make their life better. And of course, to a degree, that's true. But we also both know that you get to a certain level where no matter what more you have, it makes a very marginal difference. Yes, once you have $20 million, do you really need 100 No, you're right. People vote their pocketbook, and that's the kind of age-old political rule. But, you know, it's changing. Like young people today, college age, what are they interested in? They don't mind having a pocket full of money, that's for sure. But they're interested in sustainability. They're interested in social justice. So what's driving the younger generations is a more lofty, more global set of principles. It's coming. I just want, like you do, to accelerate that change. Yeah. I think it is coming, that's true. And uh, 
also it's coming towards the end of our time. I want to thank you very much for coming along, John, talking to us. It's been very fascinating for me. It's and really been a pleasure. Some really lovely questions. We were able to go on some very deep stuff, which I can't normally do on an ordinary show. So this is really good. Good. Well, the subjects that I, I think most regular viewers of Conscious TV realize that my wife and I would do this because we're interested in the subject matter, and that's why we make it's the programs. It's a very good thing you're doing. I'm sure yeah. you're not getting rich with it, but it's a very good thing <laughs> you're doing. And I'm just going to show a um, little plug for uh, John's book again. And the new one coming out soon is called Higher, Higher Status. States. Yeah. So thanks very much again, John, for coming along. Thanks very much for watching Conscious TV. And I hope we see you again soon. Goodbye.